Thank you, Claire. So, as Claire has said, I'm the Programme Director for Medicine. And what I'm going to aim to do is to give you a brief overview of what the course looks like at Birmingham. I just have to issue a bit of a, a warning that medicine doesn't stand still and neither does the University of Birmingham. So we're always changing things, improving things. So what I tell you today may not be precisely what you would get um, when you come here. So we think of the programme in four phases. So years one and two is your foundation. It's making sure that you have the knowledge and the skills that you need to, to enter the more clinical phase of the programme in year three. So within years one and two, students go to general practice to see patients, but the main patient contact starts in year three. And that's about getting more knowledge and skills around managing patients and using the knowledge that they have learned in phase one and bringing that through. Year four or phase three is around broadening the professional base, looking at lots of specialties and, and widening students' knowledge and understanding of all the parts of medicine. And in the final year, what we aim to do is make sure that students are really well prepared for starting work at the end of the year and are able to manage people um, who are both well, chronically ill and acutely ill. So year one and two have very much the same structure. Um, each main semester is made up of three biological science modules shown here in grey and one module that we call medicine in society which is a combination of ethics and law, public health, psychology, sociology and disability and in each semester students study those subjects in a system-based way and at the end of each semester there are a set of exams. Alongside the modules that are learned um, online and in the medical school uh, is community-based medicine. This is um, once a fortnight students go out from the second week of the course to general practices across the West Midlands and there they start to interact with patients and acquire the skills that are needed to be a doctor. On the weeks that they're not in community-based medicine, students undertake professional academic skills, which is a case-based learning approach, acquiring lots of the academic skills that you need to be a doctor. And anatomy is taught both within the biological science modules uh, but also alongside in regional anatomy so that students have a good sense of how everything fits together. Year two looks very similar in structure, but obviously different subjects are studied, but the same format of teaching and assessment. In year three, students go out to hospitals and they spend 13 weeks in one hospital before Christmas and 13 weeks after Christmas in a second hospital. And this is around acquiring the skills of taking a history, examining patients, understanding investigations and learning the skills that you need to be able to ascertain what's going on when a patient comes into hospital or is seen in, in general practice or in the outpatient clinic. Students also study the clinical sciences, which are things like pathology, haematology, biochemistry, immunology, alongside their hospital experience. And they go to a third general practice, again, one day a fortnight, looking at the same sorts of things that they're doing in hospital, but from a primary care perspective. 
before Christmas, students do an evidence-based medicine and research methods course, and after Christmas, a group project where they look at the evidence for an area of health improvement. Our students have a clinical procedural skills passport, which is uh, an app which enables them to, when they've seen experts doing a skill and they've then had a, um, a go in simulation, when they're felt to be ready, they then will do the, the skill for real with patients and will be observed and they get their skills signed off in the app and in year five we do some testing of some of the skills then the end of the year the students have um, a multiple choice exam and an objective structured clinical exam and we use that format at the end of every clinical year so year three four and five and it is in fact the format that's going to be used for the national medical licensing assessment that will come in in 2024. In year four, students undertake a rotation of subjects. So not everyone is doing the same things at the same time. And this consists, as you can see, of psychiatry with neurology, surgery and perioperative care, which includes two weeks at the Royal Orthopaedic Hospital in Birmingham, and an 18-week module on specialty medicine. So this is looking at a wide range of different specialties in medicine. And at the end of the year, the students have their exams, and then they have a five-week elective where they can go anywhere in the world or in the UK that they wish to. Again, they will go to a fourth general practice, um, where they will do a teaching project and across the year they are involved in a quality improvement project which they present at the end of the year as a poster. In year five students again rotate through subjects they will do a three-week selected career experience at the beginning of the year and then will either rotate through three five-week modules or a 15-week module first and then do whichever one they haven't done second. So our paediatrics, obstetrics and gynaecology and a five-week attachment in general practice occur in our final year and a 15-week acutely ill patient. And this is very much what comes in through the front door of a hospital and so students are very well prepared for starting work the August after they finish. And at the end of the year, after the exams, students undertake a clinical assistantship where it's really a time for polishing up all their skills, making sure that they are as well prepared as we can possibly ensure in time to take the world of work on and um, I forgot to say that in years three, four and five, um, our students are placed in groups in their placement with a senior academy tutor who meets them every week or every fortnight to support their learning, make sure that they are getting the opportunities that they need. So what drives teaching and learning? for the MBCHB? Well, in common with all UK medical schools, we have to make sure that we meet the outcomes for graduates by the end of the programme. So the students have a set of outcomes set by the General Medical Council who regulates all medical degree programmes in the UK. And there are a set of, of outcomes that the students have to meet. And that's how we decide what we're going to teach. So you will find, you may already have found going to other open days, that actually all medical schools are fairly similar. Nobody is suddenly going to say, do you know what, we're going to be the medical school that doesn't teach the heart. No one's going to do that. But it's how we teach that makes the difference. So at Birmingham in years one and two, 
teaching takes place in some large group lectures but also rather more small group tutorials with about 15 students in what we call an M for medicine group. And learning is inquiry-based learning, case-based learning, and some problem-based learning, but we're not a problem-based learning course for the five-year programme. Of course, inevitably, there is private study, and I've already spoken about community-based medicine. In Years three, four and five, students learn not just from doctors, but from the whole multi-professional team. And this is incredibly important because medicine is a team sport and you need to understand what other people do, what their contribution is and where you fit in. We also have in each of our hospitals a set of clinical teaching fellows who are junior doctors who take a time out from their training to get a teaching qualification, and they spend their time facilitating and teaching the students. If you were in Birmingham today, as we would normally be on an, an open day, that's where you'd be. You're obviously not there at the moment, but the reason for putting that up is that we, right next door to us is the Queen Elizabeth Hospital Birmingham, and we don't just send students there. One of the strengths of the Birmingham course is that we have a lot of trusts that we send our students to. So you get a really good experience and you learn a lot about how different trusts work and what different hospitals are like, right from rural in Herefordshire to inner city. And that I think gives you a really good opportunity to choose where you want to work afterwards and I haven't put them on this map because it would look a bit like chicken pox but we we work with over 120 general practices as well like all medical schools we use simulation a lot this is a very safe um, way to learn you're doing things as if for real but there's no patient on the end so if you do the wrong thing no one gets harmed and we use simulation um, in years three and four somewhat but mainly in year five so what would being at birmingham offer you we believe that a birmingham graduate is someone who people like to work with because they're practical sensible they have outstanding ethics they're good communicators, they're compassionate, and they're knowledgeable. And the feedback that we get from the postgraduate medical world is that they like having Birmingham doctors because we are able to get on with things and know what we're doing. We would say that we aim to make sure that people leave us with a thirst for knowledge and wanting to learn throughout their careers. We want our students, our graduates, to be able to go into any specialty that they want to, not to be confined by our undergraduate training. And we're very proud of the fact that we're one of the best medical schools in the country for postgraduate qualifications. As I said at the beginning, we are always changing. One of the things that we are very keen to do is to listen to what our students tell us. We have fantastic students. We have superb student representatives and we listen and change our course accordingly. So I'm now going to hand over to Pippa Dodd, who is one of our fifth year students just about to 